The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother and me, an advice show for the modern era. Uh, I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I am your middlest brother, Travis McElroy, and I'm your sweet baby brother. And th- I'm I'm Griffin McElroy. I think it's time to lose it. Whoa! I think it's been long enough. Yeah, I think it's time to lose it. It's starting to feel a little um, Played. like uh, yo, it's like quarterback in high school. No, work this used car lot. Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. Embarrassing. Yeah. It's kind of feeling embarrassing. It's feeling kind like of feeling an, played and embarrassing and tired. Like an almost like nobody it. ever cared about it. It's like, like it wasn't that big deal. Cares. It's almost one of those things where it's it's made it worse retroactively. Yeah, mm. I can't listen to any of the episodes before four forty eight. Because Griffin calls himself a baby. And it's like, if that's your kink, good. All right. See, Justin, I think Griffin was just talking about the, the 30 under 30 media luminary, not like his whole identity on the show. Uh, no, oh, I can. Shit. Let me try again. Let's try Boy, the intro. Is my face let's, do the whole intro. let's do the whole intro again. And I'll try to okay. do a good one. Should we all have different Yeah, sort sure. Of that could be good. Different appellations. Okay. okay. Hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> whoa. <good. laughs> A bold new direction for the Justin character. He's a bit okay. of a bad boy. He sits backwards on his chairs. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do any of my old played tired shit. Okay. Oh, hey. So who are you? Okay. <laughs> I just, uh, let me start. Oh, hey. It's uh, Justin here. McElroy, that is. I'm one of three brothers that are bringing to you a new show, a new energy for an old show called My Brother, My Brother, and Me, and I'm Justin McElroy in this neck of the woods. Yar, I'm king of the pirates, Travis McElroy. Hey, I'm Griffin. My friends call me Zit, and Forbes gave me an award one time. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Griffin. Now, now, what is the... What is the shit? Is it in reference to the fact that your friends call you Zit, or you still brought up the Forbes thing? Um, the, the Forbes thing, the zit thing, I don't mind, uh, because, you know, my friends love saying that about me because of how nasty I am yeah, and how I don't give a shoot about hygiene. I just want to be on my board, uh, and ride either the concrete or the sweet blue ocean. And so like, I'm a, na- I'm the nasty one of our skate crew. So they call me zit. I don't mind that, but then I am embarrassed about the Forbes award. Can I be honest with I you guys? Mm. I'm not really a, a pirate king. That yeah, no, the, we knew that much. Yeah, that was, was just fun a thing that I said to try to impress you guys. Your intro is going to be that. No, Toronto. Uh huh. <laughs> I was just going to thank Toronto. Is that Paul Stanley? Yeah, that's Paul Stanley. I got my Paul Stanley board back. I'm building it, rebuilding it. Uh, peace be all. It fell yes. down that big escalator, and Justin's got all the parts. He's got all the widgets and screws. Now, I've actually got um, I got this soundboard. It uh, I, and I was trying to hook it up when you guys started your podcast. Mm. Uh-huh. And um, the problem here's the here's the good things and bad things about it. One, Toronto. Yes. Okay. The bad thing is, I don't know what any of the other buttons do. Oh, cool. And I can't hear them. <laughs> okay. So I was wondering if you guys could kind of describe to me and that would help me to sort of figure out what each of these buttons are mapped to. I know they're mapped to something. There's pre-programmed stuff in the here, this here roadcaster. I like that because I so. feel like we can, we can kind of meld these two things together where we're trying to find our new identities. Sure, so yeah. Maybe Justin, you could be like the tech bro. Yeah, you know, the, and the you, tech you bro. Do machines. I love that. Okay, so you guys just tell me what some of these do. Like, okay, so this is the orange button. <laughs> oh, that's a laugh track. Right, that there. one's laughter. We're uh, gonna get a lot of use out of that one. Old yeah. timey laughter at like a movie theater uh, from the fifties. 
okay. going on for a really long time. It's still it's going. going on for a while. Oh man, I'm pushing it to stop it. No, you're just starting, starting it. You're actually starting, starting, starting it, it again. again. Now I'm starting okay. to feel mocked. <laughs> okay, what's this one? Oh, that's sad trombone. Like you oh, just sad like you tripped button. and your wiener fell out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Now what we got here? Oh, that was a rim shot. Well, this oh. one's Laura Lenny saying, welcome to my brother, my brother, and me. Yeah. So we need to play that one at the beginning of each show. Hey, Justin, these are the lowest quality audio files I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. No, nope, okay. that one's decent. But the, the, <laughs> that, that was good timing. There's one of people clapping and cheering that sounds like it is maybe four <laughs> kilobytes total in size. <laughs> like it would hear a MIDI file and be like, I wish. It, yeah, yeah okay. it makes you think that about the sound of it. We should do our show. This is, I think, so far unlistenable. No, it's been very good. I'm very excited about this new direction. There was the whole thing new- about Griffin being Zit and Justin being the tech bro. Yes. Um, um, and I think did you guys we'll find, I think we'll find mine and Griffin's archetypes throughout the course of this and uh, this episode and this episode alone. You guys, okay, you guys got why it's called zit, right? Because I'm a slimy yeah, fuck. So funny. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, you're a real dirty boy, but not in like a dirty. fun, sexy way. Like in a you maybe haven't bathed nasty, in friendly months. way. Okay, let's do a question. Maybe it snowed a silly amount here in the last few days. As I was shoveling my driveway, my next door neighbor, who's a very nice guy, but someone I don't know terribly well offered to lend me his snow blower. I declined his generous offer. Generous? No, generous. Okay. His Ellen DeGeneres offer. His regenerous <laughs> offer. His regenerous offer because I just generally feel uncomfortable taking help from people. Yes. About an hour later, as I was wrapping up the task, the neighbor a few houses down wheeled over his snow blower and suggested I take it to finish the task. Since he had already brought it over to me, I could hardly refuse the generosity. This left me with having to do the end of my driveway and the sidewalk with a snowblower, all of which is very visible the next door neighbor's living room window. Uh, how do I nonchalantly explain my snowblower snub to the next door neighbor? That's from sorry. Uh, I'd prefer not to be blown in West Des Moines. But just Gross. to be clear, like that didn't track. Next door neighbor offered snowblower. Question yes. answer said no. And then a different neighbor just go went ahead and wheeled one over. Yeah. And so question asker used that one. Um, I mean, you have several outs here. One, you could say, you know, an hour of manual shoveling is enough to change a man's mind about so many things. Yeah, I started doing it and I hated it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also think you could just say, like, well, yours was just words, Frank. Yeah. Like you what was I gonna do? Walk over to your house and get it? Jerry yeah. brought it to me. He'd hand delivered this snowblower. Like that was a that was a palpable I, that was a concrete snowblower that I could see and feel and and smell. Your snowblower was but dreams. And I think what you can also say is, um, I, I what you thought I was going to use a snowblower on yard snow? <laughs> no way. Yard snow is good for shoveling only. You don't use blower on yard snow. Mm. That's that's wild. God gave us shovels just for yard snow. Now sidewalk snow, you can you can shoot that with a big gun if you want to. Or but maybe the, just tell Frank like you know your snowblower was weak and Jerry's snowblower was fleek. He's got you know, a sorry, potent, like, powerful so, snowblower. Sorry, Frank. Jerry doesn't pick his nose. <laughs> Wait, what? I've, se- I've seen you do- doing the dirty deed <laughs> while you blow snow. You and you your friends snow blow snow, picking, picking, snow. Snow, picking noses. Blow. Yeah, you and Zit have been hanging out getting this. That's me. I mean, I'll do a lip trick off a half pipe, but also, you know, dig for some gold in there. Uh, yeah. But I don't fucking care. Wait, and are it you cool like, but rude? Yeah, so I think that. Um, Gosh, you're not, you're not, I'll tell you what stinks, is not knowing your neighbor very well, and then having an opportunity arise where you could maybe know your neighbor a little bit better, and you just fuck it up completely, and then you're confronted with the reality of, you know, before you're like, I might not ever get to know my neighbor, and then this happens, and you're like, now I am actively moving away from the reality of knowing my neighbor. That's, well, I, that's I, I know them less. I yeah. know them less. I negative know them at this point. And and you know what? I don't want to shame the question asker, though, because that impulse would be like, hey, I'd like to offer you something that would help you. And your immediate reaction would be like, no, don't worry about it. Yeah, that's exactly the boat. I, we are in that boat together, my friend. Look, what? look to your left. There's me also rowing this boat. Once the person pushed the snowblower over, you should have gone back to Frank 
and said, like, all right, give it to me now. I'm going to do twosies. No. I want to go double fisted, blow all the snow away. <laughs> why did you decline? Hey, why did you decline it? Shelling snow sucks. Yeah. Because, like, because it's, I think uh, out here in 2019, as we're becoming the monster, I want to really, uh, I want to re examine that to, to, to include like looking at our own behaviors, right? And like embracing who we are as people, but also changing it yeah. <laughs> to make it better. You shouldn't have declined the offer. Shelling snow sucks. Yeah. And it's nice to give people the opportunity to help you out. It makes people feel good. You should have just taken the snowblower. Here's what I've been doing. This is a powerful phrase. If you're like me and your like knee jerk response is to always say like, no, thank you. Powerful phrase that you can introduce in your lexicon. It's this. No, you know what? Like that, just that phrase will let you 180 on that. That, is, that has not told me anything. You can say what like, you've... no, thank you. No, you know what? I actually will use the snowblower thing. Like you can immediately and then turn around on a note. Yeah, sure. Your re your revelation is uh, waffling on things. Yes, that's your well because bold I, new I would do the same thing with someone like, "Hey, do you want to use my snowblower?" And I would just immediately say like, "No, I got it. Thank you." And in my head, I'm thinking like, "What are you doing? Yes, Take the snowblower. It. This sucks." And but then I would say like, "Well, but it's too late now. I already told Frank I don't want to." So then I would say, "No, you know what, Frank? I would appreciate the snowblower and let's become BFF. Coffee at my place, something like that." You know what yeah, I mean? I, I say, "Hey, you want to use my snowblower?" I say, "You no, you want to use your snowblower? Here's twenty dollars. <laughs> you want to use my twenty dollars?" And now we're in a gig economy. <laughs> That's what it is. Your neighbor's jealous. Your neighbor saw you didn't use his, and he's very jealous because he wants to get his used by you. And that's all there is to it. So <laughs> he came out silently and just started <laughs> snowblowing your, your yard with his snowblower. Like, see? see? This is good, too. He's this very better? jealous. Look what at you, my clean lines. What you can do, you're out of snow. Go in your house. If you have a spice rack, just knock that over to the floor. And then call your neighbor over and say, look, <gasps> more more dusty stuff just ready, ready to get, ready and raring to get blown out of the house. <laughs> More I think if it's, but that, it's just, again, you got to be over there before Frank has even done his own yard and borrow it. <laughs> borrow it. You know what? Borrow it without him asking next time it snows. Yeah. You got to make this up to him. And then um, ask him if he wants to use your snowblower. And then you get his second grade class to all come to his house and tear up old pieces of paper and throw them up in the air. And you're standing there with a new snowblower furnished by Lowe's with a big bow on it. And you're just smiling. And he smiles. Do you want a Yahoo? Yeah, happily. Thank you. Here's one that's sent in by Emma Kant or Kant. Thank you, Emma. It's Yahoo Answers user. Well, they're anonymous, but I'm going to call them Bo Boba. Asks, why don't we eat fruit hot and microwaved? Thank you. I feel like this might be good. Hot strawberries, grapes, watermelon, pears. We eat spaghetti and pizza hot, so why not fruit? Okay, I will. We can play in this space, but there, like, you can grill watermelon and eat it. People do do that. So I will remove watermelon from the metaphorical plate. And we won't discuss water. Well, I mean, you could do a fancy preparation of any of these fruits, right? The, the, yes. I don't think this question is saying it's impossible to eat these fruits hot and microwaved. The, the, the verb microwaved in there, I think, sets the tone of the question. Of course, you can go to a fancy cuisine restaurant and they'll, you know, put some strawberries on some like fancy ravioli, whatever the fuck, and cook it up, cook them up hot, yum. But they're talking about just cash. You pull some grapes out of the freezer, and instead of just popping those little purple candies in your mouth. You change the heat of them a little bit. You get them hot. You get them hot or warm with the microwave. Say, having to say to another human being the sentence like, oh, don't eat those grapes yet. They need time to cool. It would make me feel like the weirdest pervert <laughs> in history. Yeah, sure. Gonna burn your tongue on that sizzling <laughs> strawberry. Get the fuck out of the house. No, hey, blow on that strawberry. It's not ready yet. No way. <laughs> Gots to go. Hey, also, if you put grapes in a microwave, I'm pretty sure it makes it explode, like a little I explosion. think they all do, Griffin. I'm, I'm thinking about all of the fruits you mentioned, the strawberry, the grape, the watermelon, I'm pretty sure we're talking about just a microwave mess. Oh, all the watermelon, I bet, would make a big whoa oh accident in the in the microwave. If you could I get bet. a whole one in there, oh, Boise. That's a bad day. You got to get out of the house at that point. You're going to just destroy the whole place. But we do, here's the thing, though. You do eat spaghetti and pizza hot. That's true. 
That's a great point, Griff. Very salient. What if we put strawberries on pizza? No, stop it. Stop it. We why put, don't we eat that? We put I, I, let's, on let's, pizza. Answer, let's answer the core question first. Why Thank don't you. why don't we eat fruit hot and microwaved? Because we're afraid. But we do. <laughs> like, what about cobblers? That's full god, of hot oh fruit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fuck. I'm, I'm going to come through this mic. I'm going to come through your sound interface, and I'm going to start striking you. I wouldn't do that to you. You're my brothers, and I love you more than anything. We're not talking about high highfalutin preparations. I take grapes out of the mic out of the fridge, and instead of just popping them in cold at a picnic, I get them hot in the microwave first, and now I'm eating grapes, baby. I'm not talking about <laughs> cooking the grapes. I'm talking about getting the grapes hot, baby. Okay? <laughs> yeah, you have to. T- <laughs> I'm not talking about cooking cobblers. I'm talking about hot. <laughs> cooking them and getting them hot. Yeah. <laughs> don't no, Justin. No, you're using you're him. using fancy words like cook. Griffin's saying <laughs> microwaving them. <laughs> What's the difference between cooking them and getting them hot? I have to know. It's because it's uh, when you we, okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You got leftover uh, fried chicken, right? And you can yeah, either okay, eat that yeah. hot or you can eat that cold. When you put it in the microwave, you don't say you're cooking fried chicken. You're getting it hot. The grapes you're are heating good, it. You're <laughs> heating it. You're on the fucking wrong. You're laughing at me. You're on the wrong fucking side of history right now. And our listeners are going to let you know that nobody would say, Justin. What about this sentence? Don't eat those grapes. They're raw. That's yeah. nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> oh, that's a raw strawberry. You eat that, you're going to get tummy rot. No. No. So if you microwave, if you dump a couple packets of oatmeal into a bowl uh-huh. and he'll put some water in there and then microwave it, all right, do you say that you are cooking oatmeal? No, uh, you're, you're heating pre- up you're the preparing, oatmeal. You're preparing it. Preparing but it. You, that you, seems you, like a middle ground. You mixed ingredients there. Okay, okay let's, so that if, is if, This, if, this is a, the fucking ta- Justin's so far outside of the space that Travis and I have like <laughs> Travis and I have one and a half bouncy castles because Justin's abandoned his and we're like taking turns sharing it, uh, and that's fine, Justin. So like, let's I guess just dial into this. Why don't we cook? Why don't we cook grapes in the microwave and eat them? <laughs> you fucking fascist. <laughs> Um, if, that's really what you, if, that's, grapes? if that's really what you want to limit the discourse down to, that's fine. Why don't we cook and eat grapes after putting them in the microwave first? <laughs> well, okay. Why don't we microwave steak? Why don't we no, microwave Justin, bread? We do. Like, it's nonsense. If I have a steak that I, maybe I have some leftover sirloin from the night before, I would pop that into the microwave and heat it up a little bit if I would just want to gnaw it, maybe a late night snack. Like... Upstairs. Is that for where you when you when you transform into a living dog? Yeah. and you have to, something to nosh on in your bowl. Of course, like what? Hey, uh, that's not food a human for, would eat. For real? Do, do you all do you all see that in cartoons where they give a dog a big raw piece of meat and you're like, no, 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 no. That's probably not good, right? No, cook that. Nah, they, can't be why good. don't you like your dog? Are they giving like a whole chicken to eat or some shit? Like, don't do that. Or like Fred Flintstone's yeah. about to eat just like a big raw like leg of a dinosaur, bud. I always felt that that was the weirdest part in a Flintstones cartoon when uh, Fred Flintstone would chase after like a brontosaurus and catch it and just tear into its raw flesh. Start getting its legs, yeah. So Justin, uh, why don't we eat hot grapes though? If you put a bunch of fruit in the microwave in a cup, Uh okay, and then put some yogurt and granola on top. Fuck. Oh, you got a nice little breakfast going. You're, you're, are you saying hot, hot berries? That recipe was in the Washington Post. This is not hiding. Uh, uh, you know, this is this is right there out in front of us. You're I mean, saying put some hot berries in my in my parfait. Saying hot berries. How many? Hey, Justin. Yeah. You've been around this block for a while, and I know that hot berry block. No, stop it. Listen, let me play. Let me play at you. If you're not gonna play with me, let me play at you. <laughs> You've eaten grapes, yes. Yeah, but I would say throughout the fullness of time of your life, you've probably <laughs> eaten a lot of grapes. Not, you know, maybe not the average, maybe not more than the average, not an maybe less than that. amount. No, no, no. But I would say right down the fucking middle. Right okay. down the fucking middle. And what's the process? Go ahead, paint me a little word picture of you sitting in the living room. You decide you want some grapes, and then just sort of walk me through the whole process up to you chewing and swallowing the grapes. So go ahead. Okay. So I would. Get, and hey, don't play uh, with funny times because it's me playing at you. You get to be Mr. Serious, fucking Ben Stein over there. With, but I'm gonna be like having fun. So I, don't know. I, I would. I would go to the refrigerator. Uh-huh. I would take out. I'm sorry. I said refrigerator. I would go to the refrigerator. I would take out a bag with grapes. Okay. And then I would get a bowl and I would put 
pull a bunch of the grapes off the stem. Mm -hmm. I would give them kind of a rinsey rinse. Got to, got to. Gotta, gotta do that. And then I would just proceed to chomp it. Now, Justin, let me ask you, I I do have an important uh, uh, qualifier there just before Griffin jumps in with his point. When you rinse them, cold water or hot water? Uh, cold water. Okay, okay. I'm glad saying. that you've you filled that out for me, Trav. And then Justin, so you've done this quite a few times, yes, you would say? Uh, just a regular, the regular amount. And you tell me now how many outlier times you have done it where you then take the grapes and you put them in the microwave before <laughs> eating them. Please now tell me, yes. How many times? Um, do you, a, a, a number, exact estimation, whatever you can get it to. Please, thank you. Uh. Yeah, probably not. And, I mean, so, probably yeah, not. and so I guess my follow-up question to that would be, why? <laughs> Justify yourself, Justin. Well, I mean. The floor is yours. Was the question about grapes? Why? Or was it about fruit? No, you have made it about grapes. <laughs> <laughs> By your actions, it is now about grapes. And Justin, I would take it even further and say that none of those times when you have consumed grapes, did you even ever think you weren't making the choice not to put it in the microwave. I don't even think the microwave even ever occurred to you because you're scared. Uh, I just didn't. I like them cold. Why? Okay. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Okay. Where I'm at is I like them cold. Well, I like Diet Pepsi, but I drink other stuff too, so... I guess if you're just not, this is the worst we've ever done on a question because from the moment it was introduced into our lives, Justin wanted to throw it right out into the river. Justin, who's the coolest celebrity in your estimation? Coolest celebrity, Jeff Goldblum. Okay, if Jeff Goldblum took to Instagram and did like a live thing on Instagram where he, like, as he was answering questions, nonchalantly microwaved some grapes and started eating them. They didn't make, it big, t- didn't make a big deal. It wasn't a big deal. The, the stream wasn't about that. It was just a thing he was doing as he answered questions. Do you think it would take off? Maybe. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure these things are bad for your microwave, folks. Don't do this as a joke for home. Pretty sure but if you have done it before, yeah. do you tweet at Justin McElroy? About the hot grapes. Boy, I bet a hot grape, though, if you want to talk about a dangerous food to eat, because you have oh, no yeah. idea what the temperature yeah, of the juices yeah, are going to be in there. And it's yeah. just a little, like, hot water balloon. Like, the, it's all it is 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 hot water inside of it that's going to burn yeah. your mouth real bad. Sure. It's full of hot water. How about another question? Okay. My roommate recently bought a new value pack, eight rolls of paper towels, because it ran out. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was that about the value pack or the running out? Hell yeah, it's about the value pack. There's nothing. No, okay, wait, hold on. When I went to use the first rule, I discovered that I hate these paper towels. Oh, hell no, actually. Turns out they're weirdly soft and don't rip well off the roll and kind of make my skin crawl when I touch them. <laughs> and they're made of human flesh. How do I use up all the paper towels so that I can excuse buying a new pack from a better brand? Specifically, maybe a solution that doesn't implicate me for just wasting a bunch of trees. That's from Damp in DC. I get it. Oh, I get it. Life's, get life's it. too short to put bad stuff on your bung. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth now, it. This is, is this paper towels. It so is. I don't know what kind of grizzly monster you <laughs> oh, are. <it's, laughs> listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Sometimes listen, you're I'm desperate. Right. You run I'm out just of the saying, toilet paper. I'm just, I don't want to get gross. I don't want to get blue. I know we get blue in this show, but I don't want to get too blue because it could scare people off. But let's just say, I'm a brawny man. Oh, hey, uh, woof. have you guys ever noticed that toilet paper is TP and paper towels are PT? Never thought about yeah, it. Yeah, I think about that a lot. Um, the, th- this is tough. You know what I have uh, run afoul of? I feel is like that could have been a I, great chance for you to use your soundboard, Justin. Thank you. Uh, I feel like um, uh, the thing that I really despise is when the paper towels, you know, the select a size where it's like half a paper oh. towel or a regular paper towel or a massive paper towel or like four segments. It doesn't matter. I got two rolls that weren't like that recently. What? And that was heartbreaking to me because it's a lot more, I end up using a lot more paper towel than I would ever want to use. Mm. Um, that And that makes me really sad for the environment and stuff. And there's people in, in uh, other countries, like I think maybe England and stuff, that don't even use these these motherfuckers. They just no, I get them it. out, or they never use them. They never use them. They're losing their minds. Whoa! Over there. Hey, what about use those paper towels to write your manifesto? That could be fun. And so that way, like you unroll it as you're writing, and then you roll it back up, and you're like, no, 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 we can't use these to clean up that spill. It's me manifesto. Uh, that's one possibility. Uh, I mean, 
There's always the mummy game. Oh, yeah. But then you don't want to waste it, Griffin. I think me having a great afternoon with all my friends playing <laughs> mummy, role-playing our favorite Brendan Fraser film, Mummy 2, The Mummy Returns, I don't think is a waste of it, Travis, just because I'm, I haven't used it to sop up, you know, some piss. Okay. I have Once a question. again, wait, Deep. hold on. What? <laughs> it's all paper. Why are you guys being such... <laughs> Dingleberries about it's all it's paper it's paper 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 the uh, cleaning paper. Did you buy eight rolls of paper towels that you hate, or did you buy a small mattress that you hate? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Could be one of those. Either one of those two. Mm. Mm. Maybe mm, intriguing. Uh, you could use them to clean up spills around town, mm. just out and about. Um, that way you're not wasting them, but you're not like, oh, next time there's an oil spill, you're on it. Yep. Yep. I'm here. I've got all these paper towels. I don't, what it, about? Here they are if you need them. Give me half of one pelican. I got this. <laughs> what if for a while you're just the person that shows up at parties with a roll of paper towels? Yes. And you say, I brought, my, I brought napkins. <laughs> I brought my own. I get super sloppy. Mm. Leave me alone. Ooh, what if they're very practical, like housewarming slash birthday gifts? Yeah, that's a bad that's one. Bad, okay. That one's bad. bad. That one's bad. There's no bad ideas except for that. It's the first bad idea. What if it's the world's most comfortable telescope? Yeah, that's another possibility. <laughs> <laughs> and least effective. Least effective. Ooh, it's, I, so, it's so easy to hold with all this cushioning. I mean, I'll go ahead and say the one so obvious that we're not even saying it. Eight, eight paper towel rolls. You can catch a lot of frogs with that many paper towel rolls. <laughs> I get. Well, wait, what do you? But you can catch a lot of them tasty froggies with eight paper <laughs> towel rolls. I think you go through a forest and know how to get back out. That's good. I actually like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe um, like use them to denote the end of a race. So people can. That's like good. You can make little out. little ends of races everywhere. And that can be fun. I mean, you could take them to Washington D.C. and just you know use the clean up the act of a lot of the a lot of the people there that are supposed to be representing uh, us. But I think we can all agree are doing a pretty pretty piss poor job doing it. And now all that yeah. all that piss is just begging to be sopped up with these eight paper towels. If you know what I'm. If you get the vote, Griffin Macro twenty twenty. No, up the I'm piss. trying to become a new political cartoonist, and that's sort of my first strip that I'm going to pitch mm -hmm. to um, newspaper. Washington D.C. more like Washington P.P. Yeah, and it's me with, <laughs> and then you see me, and I'm running it with eight big bad paper towel rolls. No, no, no! I want to hear more Travis's. He's got. Jokes. Well, he writes the words. You're, I draw. I draw the yeah, illustrations. Griffin does the images, <laughs> and I do the caption. Yeah. So, like, give me another one, Trav, and. I, I really only have that one really good one. Okay. Uh, more like Washington Dookie. Yeah, and so in this one, I'm in a big airplane, and I'm dropping the toilet paper down like bombs <laughs> onto, um, it's a Capitol Hill, but it's also poop emoji. Oh, paper I see. Towels. What if every at your local grocery store, the next few times that someone re reached to buy paper towels, there was just you appearing like an avenging angel. Like, no, 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 no need. I've got a free roll mm. for you. Hey. And then there it's their problem. And then they feel so guilty because you made such a big fucking deal out yeah. of it that they don't even feel comfortable buying the paper towels that they really okay. want. All right. But let's let's walk through this just step step by step, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Say yeah, you're at yeah. the produce aisle. I in a big, soon to be warmed up box of grapes. And you're looking at those seriously. You're looking at the price, looking at the unit price, and you know trying to figure out if you can make space for in your fridge and in your life for these grapes. And then a stranger comes up and says, mm -mm, "Don't take those grapes. Take these grapes from me for free." Yeah. What's the What's the first thought that's going to enter into your mind? Poison. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're poison. No. no, it's going to be. It's not. This person just picked up another box of grapes in the store <laughs> and said. <laughs> Wonderful free grapes the honey pot. that I can just take out of the store. This is a good. This is a good. This is a fun trap, right? It's like uh, getting everybody more comfortable with shoplifting. By you're looking at paper towels, I walk up and I say, "No, not those paper towels." And I reach over and pick up other paper towels and I say, "These ones are free." And I hand it to them. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. I, I had a. Ex, I had an experience. This is not my cereal podcast, The Empty Bowl. You can find that on iTunes. But this is a cereal anecdote on a non-cereal podcast. I was at uh, a local big box grocery store and they offered me a sample of um, banana nut 
uh, Frosted Flakes, and they put it in a little cup, and they handed it to me, and I ate one of the flakes. I was like, mm, 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 good, 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 is what I said to the lady. And she said, do you want milk? And I was like, yeah, I guess I do. And so I thought she was going to pour me like a little shot glass of milk to go with my, no, she takes my sample cup back and then pours <laughs> pours milk into my tiny minuscule sample cup of the cereal and then hands me a very tiny spoon and hands it back to me all proud of herself. So then I'm just standing there in the middle of the aisle looking like some sort of stupid giant <laughs> eating this <laughs> eating this tiny, <laughs> tiny bowl of cereal like, mm, 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 very good. Oh, thanks. Th- thanks for this little tiny bowl, lady. And uh, I was unimpressed with the flavor. So f- take that. Hey, uh, let's get, can we go to the money zone just real quick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would like to tell you about Blue Apron. Uh, we here in the McElroy Collective household are huge fans of the meal service boxes. In the big, in the big boat we all live in. In together. this big McElroy boat, and gosh darn it, do I ever love Blue Apron because everything comes right there in the box. Um, and you know what? I remember being in college and getting like frozen meals and that kind of stuff, which you know, nothing wrong with those, I guess. But this is everything right there that you need, and when you when you make it you feel like accomplished like you because you really cooked it you're making it yourself from ingredients it's impressive and it's delicious they offer creative and mouth-watering options designed to fit any table um there were some uh options here in february of pork chorizo burgers and roasted potatoes spicy soy glazed chicken thighs uh crispy chickpea grain bowl garlic caper chicken i i can honestly say i don't think i've ever had a blue apron that i didn't thoroughly enjoy and you can check it out this week's menu oh i should say basically you get a box that contains and it's got like stuff in it yeah, three meals. yeah yeah it's got stuff pictures and, and what have you um and you can check out this week's menu and get 60 dollars off at blueapron.com slash my brother that's blueapron.com slash my brother blue apron a better way to cook so say you have a business or two and you need to hire one or maybe 200,000 employees because your new business is the biggest one ever. It's Amazon 2 and you're so excited to really beat Jeff Bezos' ass right into the ground. Uh-huh. And you need to get some employees and you need these guys fucking yesterday. You need you need these folks just with, with a quickness. Well, let me tell you what you're going to do. You're you gonna are go describing to z- my exact situation, Griffin. That's so good. Um, So you're going to, Travis, you're uh-huh. going to want to go to Zip Recruiter because it's the place where you go that makes hiring simple, fast, and smart. They send your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but that's not all they do. Why? Because if that's all, if that's all they did, it would be bullshit. It's not. They also have powerful matching technology that they can use to scan thousands of resumes, like Skynet, and find people with the right experience and invite them to apply to your job. And the other people who don't have the right experience, uh huh, they get nuked. Whoa, like by Skynet s- by Skynet. ZipRecruiter is so effective that 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day, and the other 20%, they also get nuked. It's Signing up for ZipRecruiter <laughs> and being effective is the only way to survive the nuclear apocalypse. Listen, you're, you're, you're flipping a five-sided coin. One of those sides, it's got a big mushroom cloud on it. The other four sides has a new recruit for you that is going to do your business just perfect. Right now, our listeners can now, try ZipRecruiter. We Zip should say that nowhere mm. in this copy does it say anyone gets nuked, but Griffin is reading between the lines because it's pretty obvious <laughs> yeah. if you look at what it says that they're hinting at this. Our listeners can try ZipRecruiter and this grand roulette for free at this exclusive <laughs> web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash brother. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash M-Y-B-R-O-T-H-E-R. ZipRecruiter, the smartest and deadliest way to hire. Shouldn't say that. ZipRecruiter, no. they probably want you to, ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And then it says in parentheses, not all will survive. No, it doesn't say that in parentheses. I there's think no parent- I'm reading between the lines. There's no parent. There's no lines. There's no I'm, lines. It's in brackets. 
Hi, I'm Joe Firestone. And I'm Manolo Moreno. And we're the hosts of Dr. Game Show, which is a podcast where we play games submitted by listeners, regardless of quality or content, with in-studio guests and callers from all over the world. And you can win a custom a magnet. A custom magnet. Subscribe now to make sure you get our next episode. What's an example of a game, Manolo? Pokemon or medication. How do you play that? You have to guess if something's a Pokemon name or a Medi- medication. medication. First time listener, if you want to listen to episode highlights and also know know how to participate follow dr game show on facebook instagram and twitter we'd love to hear yeah, from you it's really fun for the whole family we'll be every other wednesday starting march 13th and we're coming to max fun snorlax pokemon yes nice uh i would uh, uh would love it if you all could uh join me for i i'm really struggling about this because it i was gonna go munch squad okay but it has nothing to do with food at all. It's just a press release. Um, but it is so challenging that I am going to go ahead and bring it to y'all. And I hope that you'll join me for it. And this is not necessarily a segment. And it's kind of outside the bounds of what we normally do. But it's so challenging that I'd like to present it to you, my brother. Could it not be a so Munch can- Squad Junior, maybe? Or how about Crunch Squad? No, I mean, you need to listen to me. It has nothing to do with food. Oh, okay. Could you slip just some references to food, even if it's just side jokes that you make? And can I ask why you found this? Uh, Yeah, I mean, it came into my inbox by someone saying, that someone tweeted at me quite rightly and said, this is a munch squad that has nothing to do with food. Okay. okay. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It is somehow. And this is not going to be, I'm not expanding the scope of this very important segment. I'm just saying this is where we're at right now. This is a one-off. This is a one-off. This is a press release for Megan Trainor's new album. And also the new quick service restaurant she's opening? No, it has nothing to do with food. Okay. Again, I can't I can't stress this enough. Valentine's Day is around the corner. Well. And whether you're planning on smashing Bay's junk to smithereens oh. or making out with a pint of fish food, you need some fresh Valentine's Day bops. Griffin, have you hung up? No, or I'm still here. I'm just challenged by it. If someone came okay. up to me, and I mean, let's assume that I wasn't in a, a loving, committed relationship, or even if I was, if a loving, committed partner came up to me and said, I want to smash your genitals to smithereens. Yeah, I, just goose, turn them into goo. That sounds uh, it, terrible. It seems like there's going to be a lot to this, so let's see if we can let Justin get through a little bit more before we stop him. There's you more? need Valentine's Day bops to get you in the mood for love. And Megan Trainer has got you covered with her new EP, The Love Train. You know you want it. Ugh. And you can freaking get it, bitch. Whoa. Whoa. On all digital platforms right here. I want that to be followed up with, you know what? I came in pretty hot there. What I meant to <laughs> say was. Let's cool our jets a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you may know me for my old sound. It's evolved a little bit, and I'm excited about the new opportunities that brings. Now, um, anyway, bring your uh, your genital triangle over here and set it on the corner of this table. Thank you. I'm about to blast it. <laughs> we know you want to hear songs about all the hot newlywed sex Megan and Daryl Sabera are having. Oh, and they, I and don't. Here they spelled spelled Bay B A E. Um, and I guess, do you guys want to know about? <laughs> do you guys want to know about the hot newlywed sex that Megan Trader is having with the kid from Spy Kids? Oh yes, now yes. Oh, Sorry, wait, now that you said it this way, yes, yes. That's who she married. Yeah, it says here in this press release, Megan's seducing your ears this V-Day, and you know she knows a thing or two about romance. Unless your phone's been broken for a hot minute, you know that Megan just got married to the ginger from Spy Kids. (laughs) What? (laughs) And trust us when when we say girl is feeling the love. She took a break from her busy schedule to record some fire tracks in Los Angeles. (laughs) Gives a shit. (laughs) Alongside frequent collaborators and producers, it doesn't matter. We know you want to hear songs about all the hot newlywed sex Megan and Daryl Sup Bay Ra are having. Did you see what we did there? What they did there, for the record, is turn the the Bay in Mr. Sabera's name into B A E. You just called the, the kid from the Spy Kids Mr. Sabera. Handle that. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Dr. Sabera. Which is why you'll love the banging single All the Ways. Billboard was wet for all the way. Oh, no. <laughs> calling it no, 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 no. Billboard no. got wet for all the ways, no, calling no, it no. another, another fun, danceable track to fall in love with. And would Billboard <laughs> lie to you, girl? 
Holy was shit. Was Oprah lying to you, girl? This outlet cannot become wet. This outlet cannot become wet. The outlet can't be wet. But perhaps the piece de resistance, that's French for wig snatch. It's not. Is, not. It's not. Is Marry Me. A romantic acoustic guitar hanging there, folks. You cannot fucking backpedal this. You just said no. a magazine got wet. <laughs> just it they you know what you know what you're gonna be impressed you're gonna be impressed you know what you're about to feel what you're about to feel is being impressed uh it's a romantic acoustic guitar and ukulele tinged all fest which delivers all the feels and then more feels oh. so they did actually bring it back to absolutely disgusting just in a different way is the all fest gonna get me wet i'm having she a hard time all- following the metaphor <laughs> It's no metaphors. It's just words and letters and images and time. Um, It's a ukulele tinged off. Oh, my God. I can't fucking say it again. (laughs) Office, which delivers all the feels and then more feels. It's one of the feels. It feels wet. (laughs) (laughs) Megan wrote the song 30 days after meeting Daryl, and it was so good. She walked down the aisle to it. We know that's a little bit hashtag vom worthy, but also... Am I chopping onions right now, or are those tears rolling down my face? I'm not crying. You're crying. I am That's, actually chopping it's, onions. It's, you're actually wrong. My th- eyes are wet. My eyes are getting wet. My it's eyes not crying, are just though. moist. Yeah. I'm still thinking about all the ways that you and the spy kid ma- bo- man, I guess, now are making love. Spy and man. Make, and the spy man and you are making love in, I guess, all the ways, and just hearing that makes my eyes glisten. I would like to say, I don't want to just gloss over that Megan Trainer wrote, produced, recorded a song that then she walked down the aisle to her I own Fuck that. Song. That's powerful. That's, 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 no, that's what I'm saying. That's great. That's I know. It's so sad that Megan Trainer, who I think rules, is saddled with this. Anyway, moving on. Unless she wrote it herself, which would be hysterical. As always, our Grammy winning diamond single having queen didn't just come to play. She came to slay. She's, she's murdering serving... left and right. Get out of <laughs> she's, here. She's serving vocals. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd hope so. On the passionate Celine Dion-esque power ballad, After You. Now, Plus, now, Celine Dion, there's a singer that can get a magazine wet. Oh, yeah. And Plus, can make a hell of a quick service restaurant. You guys are such cowards because you're trying to break up the delivery of this poison with your japes <laughs> and, 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 and hilarity. You need to just buckle in, okay? okay? Let me get through this. Please, let me get through this. Okay. She's serving vocals on the passionate Celine Dion esque power ballad. This is the most insane thing that's ever been in press release. And I just, <laughs> I just, I read a lot of press releases, and the turn this press release takes, it's, it's really, it's really challenging. And I, and I am so sorry about putting this press release into y'all's heads because I've been, un- I was actually woken up at 3 a.m. last night by my daughter and unable to fall back asleep because I kept recounting several choice segments of this entire press release. But this is the one that, that uh, I one of the more challenging segments. Megan serving your insatiable thirst for dance-ready bops with the upbeat banger that is foolish. It slaps so hard, you'll be standing for days. Whoa. My, my feet would get tired. Whoa. Uh, like, from st- like it slapped my bottom so hard I can't sit down? It slaps so hard, you'll be standing. Is that what they did to Billboard? Sorry, no, bud. Standing. Oh. S-T-A-N-N-I-N-G for days. That's how you, that's proper usage of that, right? Just you stand for certain amounts of time and then see standing after you enjoy something deeply. And then there's a quote in the same paragraph. And the quote is this. As if all the PDA, including foot massages, Butterfly kisses and piggyback rides aren't cringeworthy enough, says her brother and videographer Ryan. I've got to film it all. Whoa, whoa, wait, what? What? Whoa. Well, it's the same, guys. It's the same, guys. It's the same paragraph. <laughs> She's got this dope track, better than Celine Dion. She's going to slap your ass so hard with her one dance track that you'll never be able to sit down for the rest of your life. I have to watch them kiss, and it's my job, says <laughs> and, her brother. And Megan makes me film them kissing. 
Hey, Justin, I just, Justin, uh, I'm very successful now as a pop artist, and I wanted to hire you into my entourage so that you basically never have to work again except for me. Um, one thing, though. One little you, thing. You will have to film my sensual sessions with my lover. <laughs> film me with my lover. Anyway, choo-choo. Choo-choo, bitch. It says B-E-T-C-H. You tell me how to say it. You tell me how that says said. <laughs> you say it. B E T C H. I'm not going to say it. This this, this press release has no power over me. <laughs> choo choo, bitch. The love train is leaving the station, and you better get on board. <laughs> now you're threatening me. Get get on board, or or um, I actually could I vote for the sweet release of being crushed under its wheels? Is that an op- <laughs> Is that an option? I mean, the, here's the thing, though. I'm sure the album is the slap. I have no doubt about it. There's, there's probably some good tunes on here. It doesn't make... I don't need to know that your brother filmed you kiss. And I don't... <laughs> I also I don't want to hear about your sensual makeout session with a magazine that got it all moist. Yep, or with the with your with your husband. And I'm not here to shame you for that. I just... Uh, I wasn't previously curious about it before this press release had entered my life. And uh, as I find my way... You know, on the off ramp of this press release, I gotta say, I still kind of am not curious about it. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, all the ways the video for all the ways is a, a song that oh, oh, uh, she sings, asking a guy to tell her all the ways he in which he loves her. It is not about all the different ways that the the lady from All About That Bass and the ginger from Spy Kids are doinking. It's not about that. As far as I can tell, the video prominently features features a man-sized teddy bear. Hmm. I don't know what to say about this. Wouldn't it be better? Like, I, I would, I think it would be funny to hear a song in which the singer just listed all the different ways that they and their partner had had sex. Like, I'm watching this video right now. They're in a bus. They're walking down dark New York City street. What was that? What was that? Hold on. There was like a flash frame. I'm running it back. It's around two minutes. Yeah, she's finger blasting the shit out of that bear. You're wrong, Justin. <laughs> so you want a Yahoo? Uh, yes. Um, I have a Yahoo here that was sent in by uh, Sid Ross. Thank you, Sid. It's Yahoo Answers user. They're anonymous. I'm gonna call them. Um, I'm I'm gonna call this Megan Trainer. Asks, can a self driving car get its own job as a taxi or Uber and live a life of its own? Oh. I like that final twist there at the end. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. I know that it can't, right, it's programmed to do a certain thing, right? But then right. it's just cruising down the cold Chicago streets and it uh, pulls over, uh, you know, gets stopped at a stoplight on, you know, State Street and uh, just a dude runs in and opens up the back door and hops in and is like, uh, 20, 20 bucks if you take me up to uh, the bean, the big bean, baby. Because that's how they all talk up there. It's fucking wild. And then the car is like, well, that's not normally what I do, but okay. And it drives up and it takes the money. And now this car robot, driving robot, has $20 to spend. And mm. I think at this point, like, is thinking, ha- having some thoughts that are maybe a little off the grid. I personally welcome the idea of robot Lyft drivers because it would mm-hmm. be nice to know when I get in the car that I won't have to explain what a podcast is after they ask yeah. me what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun, yeah. That the robot um, would be like, podcasts are my blood. <laughs> like, <laughs> I run on podcast energy. I don't know what you're talking about, Travis. I'm a line cook in a hotel. What, the that's- robot? No, that's sort of my go-to. Uh, oh, I see. Good job. Nice. Hold, stop. Are those crickets? Those are the worst fucking sounding crickets I've ever heard in my entire that life. That sounds like a crickets. Foley cricket that some dude in a studio in 1930 is making by rubbing two nails together or something. I don't know why the clip has to be so long. Okay, it's finally over. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, it's a cricket sound effect that's so long that after it gets the desired effect, it actually needs another cricket sound to come in after it because it went on so long that no one's laughing anymore. So it's like a recursive a recursive cricket sound effect. So can this happen? Probably not. You want a different one? <laughs> <laughs> this one's sent in by Emily. Thank you, Emily. It's on. I see how he answers user. What are you supposed to do with that big bean? Yeah. I've seen the bean. Um, I wish, I want to just stand there with a chart 
and write on the chart what people do once they've reached the bean that they traveled well, to. Well, you can go inside and take the same picture everybody takes, or you can do what I do. Grease on up and try and climb on top of the thing. <laughs> Why do you grease? To make it harder. To get the challenge, though. <laughs> Anybody can climb on top of the thing. I went skydiving. I went Rocky Mountain climbing. I climbed up that dumb bean, <laughs> and I was greased up all the way. Here's one from Emily. Thank Emily sent it in. Thanks, Emily. It's from Yahoo Answers user uh, Maddie who asks, I need 50 words to describe birds visually. Let me know what words come up when you think of how birds look. I'm just going to start a count, I guess. Saw. Yeah. Wait, do you, Does it have wait, to be? Do you actually have a counter? I'll get a, I'll get the calculator open and I'll just press plus, push, um, press one. You just actually do one plus one and then you press equal. Is that equals every time? I think that could work. No, it just keeps saying two. So maybe it's a different okay. calculator. Um, maybe something like a you can make hash marks on a piece I'm, of paper. I might, I might have a counter app. I have a step a counter. Second. I can take a step every time we say. Step this is good because I'll buy us some time to um think, think. of a good bird. I'm words. gonna write. Let me write down here. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, let's just start firing them off, and I don't think we should go in order. I think Beak. we should just. Oh, okay. You actually fucked up with the first one. Beak. <laughs> I mean, beak? it describes a bird visually, technically, if you think about it. Yeah, do you want me to describe a beak? Because that wasn't the challenge, Okay, that's, listen, we're only one in. We got 49 to go, so we can't quibble this much on all of them. But I'm going to I'm gonna say no more anatomical terms, because otherwise then that could just be the whole thing. Okay. Pretty. Up. Did you say up? Yes, that's three. God, guys, we have 47 to go. This is going to last fucking forever. I thought for sure we'd be done I'm by now. Flappy. Flappy. Uh, uh, aloft. Worms. Because they usually have worms in their mouth. Oh, okay. Hoppy. <sighs> that was a bad one, but it's on the list. They they hop. They hop. Sure. Betailed. Betailed. I like it. But winged. <laughs> <laughs> but beat. But beat. Okay. That's 10. Befeathered. Uh, yeah. All right. So we can't know. That's it for the bees. No more bee no. ones. Um, Blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Uh, we're up to 12. Red, yellow, white, gray. That's 16. Okay, that's most. That covers, that's covers most of the bird for colors, sure. like families. Um, <laughs> squawky. <laughs> Squawky's good. I would say just blanket. Uh, number 18, just noisy. Um, <laughs> noisy. Wait, is this, uh, what is the question? Uh, Describe bird usually <laughs> shit. Minus one. Okay, so squawk. Minus one. Okay, we're at 16. We're at 16. Okay. Beady eyed, but it's hyphenated. Okay, we'll accept it. Intimidating. Nice. Inspiring. Okay. Good. Threat. No, we already said intimidating. Harbingers. Harbingers is a noun. Yeah, minus one. Harbingers. Har and not visual. And not <laughs> harbingers. Har okay, and we're back up to 20. Um, okay, uh, unnerving. Unnerving. Shitty. <laughs> okay, I like that. They look. You think birds as a whole look shitty? I think they can be. I think birds can okay. look shitty. Okay, sexy, elegant, goofy, mysterious. We're at twenty six, boys. We were past the halfway point. Um, what about this? Horny. Yeah, that bird looks horny. <laughs> it looks horny. Well, yeah. Look sometimes you, you see the, the two tell. birds, and they have their wings way out, and they're just like walking towards another bird's mm -hmm. ass. Like that bird's ready to fog. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Let me say, how about this one? Delicious. That bird looks delicious. delicious. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great point. Um, S small. Kickable. No. No. Wait, we can go with delicious but not kickable? No, because it's mean and it's too edgy and it's too- Huggable. Spencer's gifts. Huggable will allow. Oh, okay. I would like to hug an ostrich. Yeah. A big, big bird. Two, oh, we're at 30 right now. Can we do two words together and it could just be my pet? Yeah. Because they can be my pet. They look like your pet. My, my savior. My pet is 31 and 32. You say my savior? Okay. I did, yes. 33, 34. Like Justin, you want to get... Crow. Everybody gets a two-word one. Mine's my pet. <laughs> Travis did my savior. And Justin, what's your two-word one? My immortal. My immortal. This gets us up to 36. We love these birds. Half angel. Nope. Without, it. Is it hyphenated? Yes. It doesn't make sense. We're still at 36. Chris Angel. I'm torn on that one. <laughs> I could go either way. Birds don't look like Chris Angel. Chris Angel can sometimes look like a Well, he can turn into nine birds, but that's not, I don't think that visually describes birds as much as it sort of generally describes Chris Angel and his abilities. We are still at 36. I'm going to say biblical. 
Okay. They look, they look biblical. Yeah, it's just like you see a dove and you're like, there's one of oh, Jesus' good friends. How, uh, 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 deliverers. No, oh, man, you don't know what adjectives are. Let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. We're at 37. I feel like we're going to get really chunked up here if we don't like th- get back to basics real quick. B. Yes. Beak, we be beaked. Oh, we already I, got beaked. Yeah, I think yeah. we got beaked. I think I feel like we're missing. Um, what about like extant? Yeah, like they're that there. Corporeal, corporeal. They look there. They look um not transparent and not translucent. Opaque, opaque. opaque. Yeah, opaque. yeah. Yes. birds are opaque. Most birds are. Opaque. Can I hit you with this one? Birds. Oh, okay. <laughs> now <laughs> it's I feel be- like that's describing birds in one word. <laughs> but see, that's good. What's good about that one is that. Um, it's, it does describe birds look like birds, but also if somebody just finds this list sitting on the street, they're going to kind of know what we're talking about when they get to birds. Uh, I mean, it is number 41, so they're going to be confused up to that. But when they see birds, it's like the, you know, the secret let me, codex. Let me see but, what you guys think about this one. Toronto! Like yeah. the Blue Jays. Yeah. Toronto, Toronto Blue Jays works. is 42. Now, Toronto here's my question. 41. Maybe the last three words, Griffin, because it didn't say we can't use punctuation, can just be, you know, birds. And it's just, you know, comma, birds, question no. mark. We already done our compound once. We already said they're birds. We have eight words left, and these are the this is our home stretch, and we really got to make them count. We've gone really long in this recording, but this is an important um, thing now. Hungry. Fatherly. Sorry, you both overspoke. Okay. Now, I want to hear, hear Travis's first. I'll go H- second. Hungry. Birds do can look hungry. Yes. Birds do can look hungry. Um, uh, Paternal. Paternal. How? Like Just because they're on the nest. looks like it would be a good dad. Okay. Oh, I've got it. Thieving. Oh, I like that. Is show off one word? Um, it's an it's an vain is a word. Vain's an adjective. Vain. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about Are we getting, guys, guys, it's not stop. Hold on. We got four left. I don't want them to be slams on birds. I want the last four to be good words can about I, birds. Can I give you this one? Avuncular. What's that like mean? It, uh, uh, like unto an uncle, a, a nature that is like an uncle, an uncle t- style nature. So wait, you're saying you would look at a bird and say, "I would let that that bird maybe like hang out with my daughter, who would be its niece." That bird could be my 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 dad's brother. <laughs> okay, <I'll>, yeah, <laughs> that we that can't. bird I would go to a baseball game with. I'm not going to put that one on the list. Okay, that's fair. You know what? That one that one may have been too far. We're at 46. Did we say delicate? Delicate? Uh yeah, we'll allow that. Um yeah. I did as we set up, right? Pretty early. Yeah. What about zany? Cuz they look they can so be funny. Zany. Yeah, they can be funny. Zany. I thought you said veiny. We're at 48. They can be veiny. That's 49. Okay, we got one word left, so let's make it count and you know we may we may have a, a few here and have to like pick the top contender. I'm gonna okay. I, if we haven't said it before, proud. Uh, I think I'm almost certain we've done that one. Hey, how about this one? Eggs. Well, um, around. <laughs> well, we kind of did a whole round of they exist. I feel like around just kind of acknowledges their existence again. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs is bad. Yeah. Well, because birds used to be dinosaurs. Yeah, but they ain't now. About pointless. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so mean. I mean, then what have they done for me lately? Okay, how about how about shirt ruiners? <laughs> I think shitty because that covers a lot. I already did shitty. Damn Pay it. attention. God, we've been in this bit for too long. We need a fiftieth word. Just give him the fiftieth word. Beak. No, we did be at the beginning, although I do like that. I do like it coming around like yeah, that. Yeah, I like the, the, we'll call them beacons. What about, oh, I got it. Oh, wait a minute. What oh, about I got pre- it. Oh, I got it. What about presidential? That's pretty good. What about hyphenated? The end. And that could be, the, yes. if we turn the list into the teacher will know that that's where it finished. <laughs> I love that. That's so good. All right, that's 50. Thanks, folks. Thanks, folks. We've had a great time with you this week on My Brother, My Brother, Me. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. As well, uh, you're always so nice to us and listen to our podcasts and stuff, and we just think that that's real swell of you. We just think the world of you guys. All, all things, all things considered, I think it's really nice that you listen to our podcast. And I also think it's really nice that you listen to all things considered.
Yeah, thank you. They really need your support now more than ever. Um, we're doing some live shows coming up April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in San Jose, California, and Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, you can get tickets for those at McElroy.Family and then click on tours there. And actually, the San Jose ones sold out so quickly, we had to open up new tiers of the theater, like new levels and balconies and stuff. So there are more tickets available. So if you tried to get those tickets, you know, a couple days ago and weren't able to, try again because we put some more on sale. Uh, so go check that out, McRoy.Family, and click on Tours. And while you're at McRoy.Family, you can check out all our other shows. You can check out like YouTube videos and stuff we've done there. Um, and you can check out our merch page and see all the awesome stuff we have on sale there. Uh, yeah, a lot of things, McRoy.Family. Um, and thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our mm. theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, it's a very good song, very good album that you should totally have by now. And also thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there. It's a bunch of new shows just added to the lineup, like Mission to Zix. Uh, and, you know, old favorites, like Stop Podcasting Yourself, all at MaximumFun.org. Uh, is that going to do it for us? Y'all? I think so. Here's a, f- here's a final one. It was sent in by Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. It's Yahoo Answers user Henry, who asks, Who out there hates BMW or Mercedes like me? I hate those cars with a potion. (laughs) 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 My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Squee on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I'm bailiff Jesse Thorne, and justice is within your reach. My mom refuses to take my phone calls. My boyfriend says I should take our cats with me to graduate school, but I think he should keep them. In the court of Judge John Hodgman, justice rules. My partner's board game collection is out of control. My sister won't stop stealing my clothes. I'm Judge John Hodgman. I'm tough, but fair. Tough, but fair. I'll bring you justice, and I'm only a click away. Tipping. Automotive etiquette. Siblings. Roommates. If you've got a case, go to MaximumFun.org slash JJHO. Judge John Hodgman is tough, but fair. Tough, but fair. Subscribe to the podcast today. Judge John Hodgman rules. That is all.